city's afraid of me. I've seen its true face. The streets are extended gutters, and the gutters are full of blood. And when the drains finally scab over, all the vermin will drown. The accumulated filth of all their sex and murder will foam up around their waists. And all the whores and politicians will look up and shout, save us. Here, I want to focus on the first episode of Watchmen and how the series played with tropes. The graphic novel which serves as the prequel to the series is something very interesting. It took the image of being a superhero and deconstructed it. Their superheroes are often depicted as moral and ultimately right in terms of the course of action they choose to take. In Watchmen, we get complex characters who serve their own personal morals and ethics, which sometimes put them at odds with each other. For the most part, they all want what's good in the grand scheme of things. But things become complicated when a simple yet heavy question is placed in the center of it all. Should the few be sacrificed for the many? This makes it a story about power in the hands of flawed people. The series continues with this concept asking once again, who watches the Watchmen? Which is a very in-depth question, especially when we factor in where does the power these flawed heroes will comes from. An answer to that question is from the people. When it comes to the superhero genre, people tend to simply trust vigilantes, rarely questioning their character. The graphic novel questioned just that, and now the series questions that once again, but in its own way. Now there is a lot to unpack in this debut episode in terms of what happened and what's happening, so we're going to pull our focus to a certain superhero trope, and that's the need to keep a secret identity. So to put things in perspective, in the Watchmen universe, Robert Redford, yes, the actor, has been president since 1992, and amongst his policies he passed a form of reparations for victims and their direct descendants of racial injustice throughout America's history. In short, a lot of black people benefited financially. This pisses a lot of people off and that's the cause for a lot of violence. Now because police was protecting the victims of the attack from terrorists, the police themselves began to be targeted, resulting in a law being passed that allowed officers to wear masks so that they can protect their identity and furthermore loved ones from terrorists. So in the debut episode of Watchmen, all police officers, at least in this town, wears a mask. This makes them more like a group of superheroes than officers. However, we quickly come to see that this police department has flaws. For one, gun control makes them not efficient, which makes the point that if we don't trust our heroes or if we try and control our heroes, they can't protect us or even themselves. However, when we do trust them, we can't be sure they will protect us either, as we saw with our heroes from the prequels. The other flaw they face is locked in the war they battle against and that's white supremacy. If the evil they fight against is ignorance and hatred, can they really fight it with their fists? On the other hand, their current threat, the 7th Cavalry, also wear masks, and this is what makes things interesting as that blurs the line between good and bad. They chose to wear the mask of Rorschach. Now, this mask has always been the most honest and trusted symbol in Watchmen, at least the leaders. Now we see the symbol mutated from serving justice to justifying racist resentment. This is scary because if Rorschach words can be twisted, then so can morality and ethics. The police are our heroes now, but what's to say they will remain so? Because as the show demonstrates, our hero once wore this mask and now is worn by those filled with hatred. At the end of the day, both sides are simply two groups of people hiding behind masks. But the masks makes them untouchable as it stops them from being individuals and instead part of an idea. Ideas that can be used for either good or bad. So what is my point? That masks are worn by heroes and villains alike, which makes it so hard to tell the difference between the two. That good and evil is a revolving door. That in a world with no internet and mass crime fighters, their world is still a close reflection to ours. Because in our world, in the world of Watchmen, we have so much information but not quite enough wisdom. This is reflected best by the squids raining from the sky. But once upon a time, a giant squid brought the world together and created peace. Now squids raining from the sky is the norm and its message of unity lost. Caught carcass on the highway last night. Soon the accumulated black filth will be hosed away, and the streets of Tulsa will turn into extended gutters, overflowing with liberal tears. 
Soon all the whores and race traitors will shout save us. And we will whisper, no. We are the Seventh Cavalry. We are no one. We are everyone. We are invisible. And we will never compromise. Do not stand between us and our mission, or there will be more dead cops. There are so many deserving of retribution, and there is so little time. That time is me. I can change almost anything. But I can't change human nature.